to this really exciting video, which it's exciting, sure. Okay, today we are gonna be talking about the 10th anniversary decade, holy shit, the 10 year anniversary of my favorite book series that I ever wrote. <laughs> gotcha, you're stuck here now. Get your finger away from the mouse, you weirdo. Okay, what we're gonna be talking about is my Black Star Canyon series. It's crazy that it's been 10 years. It really, really, it's fucking nuts. If you are going to be looking for these while I'm talking, know, when we'll get to this later, but know that the covers have changed and the titles have changed. So now if you go to my Amazon link down below, just look up the um, the Black Star series, or I think it's, um, it might even be called Black Star Canyon. I can't remember how I named the series itself, but the books are Black Star Murder. That's the first book. So just pick that up, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about how all this came to be, okay? Because if you are looking to write a book series this video is going to be extremely fucking helpful for you like really okay because i cut my teeth on amazon with this book series but i learned a lot of what to do and what not to do through this series and i learned a lot about audience reaction and audience um retainment through this series so if this is something that you've always wanted to do like strap your fucking ass into the chair okay so anyway when black star was originally and there's no paperback versions of these anymore um if paperback versions of the black star series is something that you're interested in let me know down below and if there's enough people who want paperback versions then i'll make the paperback versions but like um, I don't know. I just never really did it after this initial run. Well, the first couple runs. So if you look, <clears throat> it says that the author of this is Creep Creeperson. Because this was what I was doing um, right when I was coming out of film. This was like my first big project. I had been putting out um, the Slasherton books. Um, I was putting out um, a bunch of short stories. I was putting out some um, early poetry and stuff like that. But for the most part, this was my first really big project. And so when I was putting these out, they were originally released as weekly serials, okay? So all five of those books are what make up this book. And um, I was originally putting them out as seasons instead of um, like book one because I wanted it episodic. And the whole like Netflix streaming thing was just happening. It was, I don't know, it seemed timely at the moment. Put out book one. And then by the time the paperback came out for book two, um, I had already changed my name to C.C. Wall instead of Creep Creeperson and the C.C.'s Creep Creeperson. And then enough people started complaining that that's a girl's name and all this other stuff that like I ended up changing my name like three fucking more times. But that kills your stuff, okay? So that's the second book. Um, and those are the books from the second season. And then this was the third season. And, um, this is the biggest book, I think, like the most pages. This was the book where I changed, um... My name from Creep Creepers into CC Wall. That was the first one. And then um, we had to go back and change all of the uh, covers and all that stuff. Now, for those of you who remember, um, Zoe was the one who did all the artwork 
for these. And if you were following us back in the day, how we would do it is I would draw a horrible picture. And this is the fourth season here. I would draw a horrible picture <laughs> and then through a lot of trial and error, um, Zoe would come up with what I actually wanted. And she was really, really good at doing that. It was kind of stressful sometimes. I'm sure she'll tell you it was kind of murderous. I really liked it. The fifth book, the fifth and final book, I never made paperback versions of. So if I could find the artwork, I'll put that artwork up. These are some of the individual episode paperbacks. But um, we only put these out for people who were um, in, like, the... I don't want to say the fan club. I can't remember what we called it. But um, if you did... Like, we did this thing where we completely gamified... Um, everything so like if you left reviews if you posted things on facebook and instagram and twitter if you did all of these little things like you would get certain points and then as you would get points um we would send you the paperback of whatever episode you were on kind of thing and um, these are super cute. I love the look of these little books. And um, I don't know. I just, I have a fondness for this period. And it might be because this was the one thing I did fiction-wise that was monetarily successful. And... Um, grew my audience a lot and um, again we'll we'll talk a little bit about that as we go and each cover is a clue for something that happens in the book I was really into um, like kind of breadcrumb clues and stuff like that while I was writing this because I mean, most people, one of the big problems I had with this book is that I thought it was a mystery. Like, I thought it was, like, just a suspenseful mystery story. But most people who read suspenseful mystery looked at it as horror. Like, it was, like, fucking horrific and all this other shit. So that has a lot to do with me and just how I see things. But um, it kind of fucked up a lot of, um, I don't know, like the marketing behind this. So if I could recommend anything, make sure you know exactly what audience is going to like this book. What genre your book is when you write it. Okay. Um, oh, this is one of my favorite covers. This one's great. I really, really like that one a lot. That one came out really good. So I don't have any extra copies of these. Like, they were only made when um, somebody won one kind of thing. And this one's probably the most basic cover that um, we put together. Is really great. But as you can see, like, it was cut bad. The people who we were making these with were not great. But yeah, so... Um, this this was really fun and really cool. Um, the color on this one, I just fucking love it. Anyway, there's more books than that, but those are the ones that I could find at the moment. So what I wanted to talk about is um, kind of what it's about and how it was put together. So some of you may know parts of this story, but I'm going to try to give as much new shit as I can here. The Black Star series, Black Star Canyon was I was originally putting it together as a TV pilot. Um, I was shopping it as a television show. And I started writing it really in, I want to say 2001 or 2002. But the characters for it and the main arcs for some of the characters, I had been 
playing with since probably 98 or 99. Probably 99. Which is fucking crazy. This might help some of you. But, like, I had these characters and I had an arc that I wanted these characters to go on. But I had it in a more fantasy world. And it just wasn't working. Like, nothing... I was trying to do seemed to click and I would write stuff and I would read it. I'm like, this is just like, these characters are great, but this story just fucking sucks. Like I was getting really hung up on a lot of the fantasy world building and I would just kind of go on these like, not rabbit trails, but like I was spending way too much time focusing on shit that wasn't the story. And I was trying so hard to build the backstory that no one would ever know um, that I wasn't writing the story that people would know. I don't know what happened. It just wasn't clicking. During this time, I was also an avid watcher of days of our lives love days of our lives grew up with it which is um for those of you who aren't in america it's a american soap opera um daytime soap i remember i picked up the box set dvd for twin peaks i was watching twin peaks a lot this story was like the only story that was bouncing around my head for like a couple years and i don't know how it took this long for the light bulb to go off. But I was just like, oh, if I just told this story in like a present day small town, this would be a shit ton easier. <laughs> so I fucking um, did that. I changed the location of the story, changed what people, what some of the characters' roles would be as long as it fit like what I had envisioned in the first place. And then I started doing this other thing where I had a lot of... Um, and so already there were a ton of characters in this. Like whenever someone starts a story um, as a fantasy, like an epic fantasy, there's going to be like 30 fucking characters in your book, okay? So there's that. And then over the years, too, I would come up with, like, story ideas for other shit. Like, just, like, short stories about this, short stories about that, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of them were things I hadn't ever written. It was just like, oh, yeah, there's this idea I have, blah, blah, blah. So I started taking all these other short story ideas I had and started dropping them in on certain characters, and that would be that character's arc. I wrote the pilot. And I mean, I did it like old school. Like I had scene cards, like index cards. And I would write them out and put them on the floor. Um, have my the music blaring. And I'm like getting drunk and chain smoking. Like looking at things. I'm like, now if I move this card here, what's going to change? Oh, would this work? And doing this whole thing. But... Because I was doing it in a television format and because I was such a big fan of Twin Peaks and such a big fan of Days of Our Lives, I'm like, okay, so there needs to be like a little cliffhanger at the end of like every two minutes. So basically every two pages of the script, like there needs to be like a and a reason to come back and we could leave and then go to another set of characters and then like they'll have a couple pages and then and to just keep this going and break it up to where there were four main scenes and then there could be a break for like a commercial break i can't remember the exact minute mark it was something like, um, I can't remember if it was like, it was in between 8 and 13 minutes where, um, what I can't remember what it was, but whatever the big cliffhanger was going to be in that chunk, that would be the last one to be able to hold people through a commercial break. Okay. 
So that is how I initially wrote Black Star Canyon. Now, when I was making movies, like the whole plan was I'm making these movies, whatever. Hopefully I'll get to a point where I could like meet some television producers and break into television and then pitch my show. That was always the plan. But it just never seemed to work out right. And the the television-ish producers that I met weren't established enough to be able to do anything with it. And to be fair, I was probably holding on to it a little too tightly as my baby. Like, I didn't want anyone to know anything that happens in it. And, like, someone's going to steal this idea and blah, 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 and all this other fucking shit. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody does that shit. There are so many ideas out there and so much stuff that gets... Um, little inspirations from like nothing is a exact original work anymore like I don't think it's possible anyway what ended up happening when um and I think I'm people have been asking for this and I've done a couple videos of it but I haven't really gone deep but some of you have been asking for me to do more either like commentaries or talking about me making films because again i made over 50 features in like eight years um a lot of people cannot say that and um i somehow managed to do it but at the same time it drove me crazy and almost put me in an early grave and or prison okay so um there's that whole thing but when i wanted out of filmmaking I'm like, I gotta fucking do something. And then that's when I started doing um, the Kindle shit. So it was like 2012. And started putting out the um, the stories. And then um, 2013 rolled around. And, or wait, no, was it 2013? It might have been 2013 when I started this. I don't know. Like, give or take. It, it's kind of important because it's the 10 year anniversary, goddammit. But I remember the first episode of Black Star Canyon came out on Christmas 2013. But then the actual rest of it didn't come out until um, 2014. So that's why this is the 10 year anniversary. Even though last year I could have done the 10 year anniversary, but it, there was only one episode out and it was only out for like a week before it was the next year. So whatever. Round about 10 years, okay? When I decided to take that pilot and try to serialize it and, like, kind of open up the characters more and actually write, like, paint the picture with my words instead of what the camera sees, um, it was kind of fun. It was kind of difficult, especially since this pilot I had had, like, locked down for like a decade prior more though more than that so that was kind of interesting now the other thing is and I'm, I'm kind of jumping around here so if you guys have any questions about anything please leave them in the comments down below so i can actually talk to you about this maybe i'll make this a podcast episode i feel like this is going long yeah i, I haven't even scraped the surface yet as i was writing the serialized episodes i wasn't sure if it was going to be five episodes i kind of hoped i could fit it in five but if i was going to do six i was going to do six but because i'm a creature of habit as soon as i did five then it was like every season has to be five episodes long whereas um the second and third and fourth season i could have easily easily gone um especially the third i could have gone 10 12 easy like without any fucking problems at all i really thought that that first season the first novel okay that i was going to be able to do the pilot and then actually start writing the episodes um so that the pilot would be like book one of the first season and then all this other shit. But as I was writing it, it just kept getting longer and longer and longer. And um, so by the time you get to the end of the first book, the first full book, 
that's just the pilot. It bothered me in a sense. And I think this probably cost me some readers. Um, because, and this is like a big important point for those of you who are going to write a series. The first book basically introduces all the characters, introduces a lot of the sub-characters that are going to end up being big characters in later books, but it just shows what everyone's problem is, what everyone's horrible situation is, and then ends at the most horrific moment for everyone involved. Okay? There is absolutely no closure. Some of you might say, oh, that's a good cliffhanger. And I think it was, but I also think without giving somebody something that is satisfying, probably pissed a lot of people off. Um, I think the people who were reading it weekly, because I would put the books out every week, like the serialized episodes, and then at the end of that chunk, I would put the book out, like the complete first season or whatever. Then wait um, four to six months before I started putting out the next season. Um I feel like if I had the first two seasons done and could have just continued straight into the second season, it would have worked a lot better because I feel like a lot of people were really pissed that there was no closure. But every single person who I talked to who read the book, every single person who left comments and reviews and stuff, everyone was hooked, super fucking hooked. Like, it was like, um, and this is what sucks too when you like change your author name, which is why I really push everyone, like whatever you're going to write as, have that be your name forever. Don't ever fucking change your name. Um, If you're going to use your real name, use your real name. If you're going to use a pen name, use your pen name. Because I lost tons of reviews when I took the books down to like change who wrote the book and change all this shit. Every time I um, made big changes, if you're making little changes, like just changing the artwork, changing the interior of the book, you can just add that. But if you want to pull the book down, because Creep Creeperson's a dumb name to have as a writer, um, you, you lose all that shit. But like I was having reviews of people saying like, Um, I was reading this and I was so pissed off. I threw my Kindle across the room or like, um, I've never been so scared, but laughed so hard at the same time. There were just really amazing fucking reviews and, um, everyone really liked it, but you, people give you their trust when they're buying your book. They're allowing you to spend time inside their brain and you can do a lot of fucked up things inside somebody's head but they're trusting you enough to spend that time with you and if you don't deliver on certain things people are going to get mad okay it's just it's how it is so the initial retention rate was not fantastic but And this is how it is with every book. Like if you have um, a first book in a series, typically, let's say 20 to 30 percent of the people who read that first book are going to go ahead and read that next book. But once you get to that, um, it's going to your retention rate should be in, in the 60s to 80s. So each book that you put out, like 60 to 80 percent of the people who read that second book will move on to the third book. And all this other shit. And um, you're like, well, how do you even know that shit? It's not hard. You just look at how many books of book one you sold. Look at how many books of book two you sold. Look at how many books of book three you sold. And you can look at the numbers and see, like, this sold this many, but this only sold this many. I think if I would have given at least one little thing at the end of that first book that was some sort of resolution... I would have been able to hold on to a lot more readers. Then the other thing that I think worked really well for Black Star was 
like almost like congratulating people for paying attention. So there are characters in the first book that um, seem horribly insignificant. Like, do not have a place in the fucking world. Okay? That end up becoming really important characters in the second, third, fourth, and fifth books. There are even characters who are you don't ever see, but they're mentioned by name in the first book, and you never see this person. But then in the fourth book or the fifth book, they're a big deal. Um, or there's relevance to them suddenly that like you never knew before. So I think those things are really important to do because people really, really dug that. That was a really cool thing. Another thing that Blackstar did well, and this was kind of like, I don't know if it was like the coolest thing ever, but I really liked it and the fans of the book seem to really like it. So what I did was, if I could find it, I will put it up here. And if any of you guys pick up these books, send me an email and just tell me you got the book and I'll send you this thing I'm about to talk about. Um, I can't remember if it was in between the first and second book or the second and third book. Um, I did this thing called um, Welcome to Black Star Canyon, a tour guide for the town. And... When I first started talking about making it, the people who were like, I don't want to call it a fan club because it wasn't like a fan club, but there was like a group of people who were just like total black star psychos. They, they loved it. And what I did was um, I said, go through your town, take pictures of things that you think are really interesting. Um, and send them to me. And if you want to even be in the pictures, send those to me. And I will write those things into the Black Star Canyon tour guide and put your guys' pictures in there. Um, and that was really cool. And a lot of people did it. And um, there were just other things like, um, like this one guy went to this cemetery and took a picture of this really cool tombstone. And so in the second or third book, whichever one it is, um, I had put this tombstone in the book because in the, um, the black star Canyon tour guide thing, I said it was the tripping stone and um, it's haunted, and every time someone walks by it, they fall over. So then I wrote that into the actual book. Like, when these two characters are having this really serious conversation, they're walking through the graveyard, and then one of them trips and falls. And it, it's kind of mentioned, but, like, you wouldn't know, like, what the deal with that was unless you got the um, tour guide. And I sent the tour guide out as like a freebie for people who signed up for my mailing list kind of thing. So that was cool. Um, there was another one where um, me, Zoe, and Shaylee went on this trip. And we stopped in front of this like um, general store. And there was this big uh, bear, like a big um, statue of a bear. And um, I took their picture next to it and um, put that in the book as uh, Black Star Bear. And Black Star Bear plays a big part in the third book. Um, like the statue, Black Star Bear. And it's just like little things like that. And then um, some friends of mine who lived in the building I was living in, I had a picture of them um, barbecuing. And like they had a plate of food. And so um, I created the um, couple that owns the diner off of them too. And so just like little things like that. And that made people who read the books like feel like a part of it. And it was really, really cool. And then like I put a map in the tour guide. Um, I had like a coupon page where all of these like um, businesses in the town had something in there and then 
Um, there's like the biggest hint in probably all of Black Star Canyon is in the tour guide. I'll just leave it like this. It's in the form of a, a realty ad um, for like selling a house kind of thing. And um, again, there's characters in the very first um, book that don't come back until the very last book. And that ad for the real estate thing is the thing that connects it to where it like makes sense or whatnot when they come back and the um, book covers and all this other shit. So there was a lot of fun things put into that shit. And then when we did the, um, the secret society of black stars, that was the gamification thing. And it was like, you got badges like little JPEG badges for doing certain things. And then for each badge you get, you get a certain amount of points and then you win those books and stuff like that. So there was a lot of incentive for community building around those books. Now you're sitting here going, this sounds like a great thing. How did it all go wrong? <laughs> well, shit. If there's one thing I know how to do, it's how to completely fuck up a good thing. So let's talk about how that happened. Oh my fucking God. So the biggest fault Black Star Canyon had was the first scene I had ever thought of for this series, for the pilot, for anything, is the last scene in the fifth book. That was how this whole fucking thing started. I had this idea, this image, and I was like, oh shit, that's a really good ending. I need to like come up with how the fuck that story works. The whole time I was doing Black Star, I knew it was going to end. That is a horrible, horrible fucking thing. I swear to fucking God, if you listen to anything I say today, do not end your series. Leave it as open-ended as possible. If you have an idea like that where a whole thing came from an idea on how to end something, hold on to that and never use it until you are really fucking sure it's over. And when I mean really fucking sure it's over, like put it out 30 years after the first book comes out. Do not ever plan to end a series nope do not do it okay just don't it's horrible it's bad you can be stacking cash like a motherfucker if you just continue to build on something and the longer something's out the more legs it'll get if i had still been writing black star like, I would not be making fucking videos on YouTube. I would be so fucking rich and up my own ass that I would be doing nothing. I would be smoking a cigar and having someone give me a pedicure on a beach. Anywhere in the world. Does not matter. Okay? Having the idea that it was going to end kind of painted me into a corner. I thought it was good marketing. I thought... That like, oh man, people are going to jump on this because, and, and so the whole thing was like, like when the second season came out, there was this thing like I did before and it was like a banner ad I would have like on my Facebook, on my website, everywhere. And it just, it was like a tree trunk and it said Black Star Canyon and it would say like season two, June 2014, amazon.com. Okay. And it would be like in a forest. Then when the third one came out, it did the same thing, but the forest looked darker. When the fourth one came out, it was the same shot, but um, fire was coming in on both sides. And it said, um, yeah, Black Star Canyon season four, June 2015 or whatever. And then when the last season was coming out, it was the same image with a little more fire I think actually all of the forest was on fire except the one tree in the middle. And it just said the end is near. And it said um, season five, um, 
I think that also came out in June. I think there was a bit of a gap. Um, because I didn't want it to end. My book sales were doing really good. I didn't want Black Star to ever end. And um, so it said the end is near. And it had the date and Amazon. And um, I think it said the final season. I don't think it said season five. Then, um, because the whole thing is, is that like all of this time, that image everyone who knew black star already knew that image so seeing that image and not seeing black star canyon on it anymore but seeing the end is near um i was hoping that would like push a lot and then the day the book came out the first episode came out um i changed all the banners to everything's on fire now and it said the end is now and um that did really good. The one thing I will say is that I waited a little too long without enough teases in between the fourth and fifth season. If I would have put the fifth season out right after the fourth or in the same... Again, people like consistency. Those of you who've already um, killed your membership on my channel, <laughs> you know how important consistency is. Um but yeah, so again, if you're going to pick a schedule, stick to the schedule. But the marketing for the fifth season was amazing, and it was really good. And all the books, like you know how all those books I showed you all looked a little different? All the books in the fifth season had um, the same basic color scheme, and it was just like dark and smoky. Like there was smoke on every cover. It was just, it was amazing it was fantastic now getting to problems with this book and those of you who are fans of game of thrones are going to know exactly what i'm talking about here the problem that a lot of people had with game of thrones is everyone had a favorite character on game of thrones everybody did okay one of the big things about game of thrones is that a lot of motherfuckers die okay which is fine Problem is, is when you kill off someone's favorite character, there's a good chance they're going to walk away. Because the only reason why they were there was for that character. And shit, like, I felt this way with Coronation Street. When they fucking, um, oh my god, I can't remember her name now. I just was thinking her name. What is it? I don't know. They, they killed off, was it Kylie? Yeah. When they killed off Kylie, I was done. I'm like, how fucking dare you? You pieces of shit. Um, that was, she was my honey on that show and they fucking killed her. And I'm like, nope, nope. So that happens, you know? Now, if it was days of our lives, you know that people could come back at any moment. Um, but on a show like Coronation Street, when someone's dead, they're pretty much dead. So there's that. Oh my God. I haven't thought of Kylie in a while. Just kind of like wandered off there for a moment. What is going on with Black Star Canyon? You ask? Well, a lot of people die in over the course of Black Star Canyon. And there were two characters that I was told repeatedly, if anything happens to these characters, like, I will fucking hate you. And I will never read anything you write again. So, one of those beloved characters I killed off. Um, I won't tell you who, but it was at the very end of the whole fucking thing. So come on. And the other one did not get killed off. Um, I couldn't even bring myself to kill that character off. But there's a lot of other characters in the story who die. And there's a reason for all of it. But um, I feel like I could have done that better. And if I would have been looking at Black Star as something that was going to be continuous, I definitely would have spaced those out. I would not have killed the characters off that I killed when I killed them. Like, definitely would have not done that. So make sure that is something. Because you could shock people, and that's really good to keep people invested. But if you hit them over the head with shock after shock after shock, they're gonna get exhausted. 
they're gonna get tired and like they might want to read the next book but they'll go dude that was fucking exhausting that last one i read i don't know if i could fucking do it right away and so they put it off and the longer they put something off the least likely they're going to come back to it you know what i'm saying so um there's that now since all of this has happened during covid i almost did this but then i decided to just write more poetry so you could blame poetry if you're a fan of black star but i had two novels that i was going to write to be able to get back black star and like have black star happen again it would have been weird to get there i don't even think it would be a stretch but it is possible and if you have been watching my channel for years and years and years, um, you would have heard me even say the names because I announced them. Like I was going to start writing them and shit. Like what the titles of the books were and all this other shit. I had a really solid audience who loved those stories that basically just never forgave me with how the stuff ended. I mean, if you look at it as something that... that like, if you want to be entertained and go on a fucking roller coaster of a ride that you know is going to end, you're going to love Black Star Canyon. But if you do not like things that have hard endings, then you will not like this. Everything's paid off. Everything happens the way it should happen. But, like, there are no overly happy endings. Most people who read the Black Star series are, like, visibly shaken afterwards and fucking usually kind of pissed off. Usually after a minute, like, they're like, oh, you know what, that was really fucking good. But that initial reaction, like, if you're married to someone who likes to break dishes and throw shit... Once you know they're on the last book, get the fuck out of the house and stay gone for a little bit. Just from somebody who knows. <laughs> um, what From my own experience, please do that. Now, some of you might go, well, like, I don't understand what happened to your audience and blah, 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 blah. Well, they didn't trust me after that, which is awful. But the other thing was, I wanted to write so many different genres and I wanted to do so many different things that the next series I put out was the, um, the Brain Hunter books, the Zombie Zero books. And a lot of the people who came into like my mailing list and shit because of Black Star didn't see how a zombie series was going to be like black star even though i think there's a lot of black star in the zombie zero series but like from just like hearing about it like it, that doesn't make sense to people like okay so you have like this like mystery small town horror thing and now there's like a a zombie takeover book like how does that even work and it's funny because I could have taken those same characters and put those characters in Black Star Canyon, like in book six, and it would have made perfect fucking sense. But your readers don't understand that if you can't do that. So that's why I always tell people like, and it's why H.P. Lovecraft's like his most cherished stories are the ones from the Cthulhu mythos. And he didn't even realize he was doing that. But all the Arkham stories, the Miskatonic University stories, all this shit, they're all in the same world. If you can create that, just do yourself a favor. In every story you're going to write, put in that universe and have it be connected. It, it will help. It will definitely help. Like, seriously, take a page out of these, like, fantasy writers and these romance writers. They know what the fuck they're doing. So then after that one happened, the Zombie Zero books did not do as well as Black Star. I was, like, kind of devastated. And I put out Black Market Blood Drive, which was going to be, like, my um, vampire mafia books. 
and that I only wrote the first one because that totally bombed. It did not go over well with my audience. It just it's a good book, but it did not like connect with my readers. And so I was just like, fuck. And so I felt like I was just chasing this dragon. So then I did um, the Shallow Jallow books, which were like really tongue-in-cheek detective parodies of like 70s Jallo films. And I thought those were really clever and fun. And I put two of those out and those weren't selling like Black Star did. And then I did the Gavel books. And I did the Hitman Black books. These did not do as well as Black Star. In fact, if you took all of those other series I did and added those all up, they did not do as well as Black Star. And I was spending so much fucking time doing this shit. And I mean, you know how I do like my poetry books once a month and shit like that? A lot of these books were every month a new book came out. So it's not like I'm slouching off here. I'm busting my ass expecting something to hit like Black Star, and it just wasn't fucking happening. Oh, that was a bit later. The Dead Dame series, the Hank Bradshaw books. Those did better. Um, but again, that was a period piece. It was um, a hard-boiled detective in like the late 40s, early 50s. And um, so then around, I would say probably 2016, I came up with this way to, even though like the gavel took place in like the 30s and um, Hank Bradshaw was like the 50s and Hitman Black was like the 80s. Um, and... Uh, Edwidge Fennec, or Edwin Fennec, um, from the Shallow Shallow books, um, and uh, Doctor Roman from the um, the Zombie Zero books. I figured out a way to bring all of these characters into a new world that would be connected to Black Star Canyon. And it was going to take a lot of fucking work, which is why I never did it. And there was this book series I was working on called The Dicks, which was like a modern detective crime kind of thing. And as those books went on, characters from my other books were going to come into it. And then eventually we would realize that Black Star Canyon, the Black Star Canyon world and this world were the same one. And it was just a lot of fucking work to do. And um, I kind of fell out of love with fiction, at least the fiction I was writing, because now some of you are going to get really annoyed by this, and I apologize, but this is just like a me thing. Um... I got a little perturbed with how fetishized guns are in American literature and film and television shows and stuff like that. And I figured this out one day because I was looking at my spinner rack and I had all these old paperbacks looking at me and almost every single one had like a gun pointed at me. And um, I don't know if I was drunk or what, but I was just sitting there going, oh my God, there's like 12 guns pointed at me right now. Like if this was real, I'd be dead. And it just, it fucked with me for a hot minute. And then now I can't unsee it. Every book I pick up, someone's pointing a fucking gun at me. And I do it on my books too. You know, like it's just what we do. And the fetishization if that's a word, of it is one of the reasons why our country is in the state that it's in. And all of you Second Amendment fuckers out there, like, 
great. I'm glad you have that right. And I'm glad I just made you kind of sick to your stomach to hear some pansy ass fuck tell you that like the fetish, like the fetishizing of fucking firearms in America is totally fucking overdone. Then you can't believe it, you know, whatever. And like my fucking rule of thumb is like, I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you can't kill me with your bare hands, you don't fucking deserve to do it. Okay? That's it. That's it. So, because of that, and my, like, kind of creepiness with guns, um, I kind of fell out of favor of writing fiction. Because I don't think, and if some of you think you can do it, let me know. But I think it's almost impossible to write a modern day story of, you know, typical good versus evil shit and not have guns in it. You can't have a a police officer without a gun. I mean, some of you might go, hey, you know, our bobbies over here just have our little whacking sticks. Cool. I, I like that a lot better. I like that a lot better. Um, but yeah. So I don't know if this was helpful at all. Like I feel like I talked for a really fucking long time. I did. I just looked at the time. But um, you can get the Black Star books on Amazon and ebooks. It's The first book is Black Star Murder, followed by Black Star Killer, then Black Star Creature, Black Star Vengeance. I think it's either Vengeance or Revenge. I think it's Vengeance. And then Black Star Ablaze. Um, And those are the books. And if you get the first book, it'll tell you what the next book is, like what to read next kind of thing. But if you do pick these up and check them out, let me know what you think of them um, in the comments of this video or podcast. I don't know what the fuck this is going to be. So um, if you have any other questions about writing fiction or marketing fiction or anything like that, Please leave it in the comments down below or send me an email at IHateMattWall at gmail.com. Ask your questions and I will do more content like this. Okay? So, keep buying my books. Get the Black Star books. Type hard, everybody. Join the Anarchy Crew and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.